BYD update for mid-March. In this episode, lots of product updates. Wait, this just in, BYD chairman Wang Shangfu is speaking to the media, and he says that Chinese new energy vehicles are three to five years ahead of the rest of the world. Yeah, that's about right. Maybe even an understatement. There's just a wild exuberance in the Chinese auto industry right now and a willingness to try things that legacy automakers won't touch. I liken it to the American auto industry back in the 1950s. There's just a wacky sense of optimism for the future of the automobile. GM toured the country with its Motorama exhibit, showing off cars styled like jet fighters and powered by turbines, and then later, battery electrics and fuel cell vehicles. China is doing stuff like that now. Not all of it's going to work. I've been burned too many times before by the promise of a flying car, but you cannot deny that this optimism is powering innovation in electric vehicles and in autonomy. And in a minute, I'll show you what BYD is doing with drone leader DJI. Quick summary of their financials. We're still a couple of weeks until their full 2024 annual report gets released. Their amazing growth could show stress in the form of higher inventory levels and debt. BYD is raising over $5 billion by issuing 118 million new shares of its stock on the Hong Kong exchange. The money from that will go into a big fat bonus for their chairman. And now nah, it's going to be invested into more technology research and overseas expansion, you know, growth. Despite the dilution in ownership by issuing more shares, the stock price did not take much of a tumble and is up strong over the past 12 months. Sales through January and February are better than last year, if you call 90% growth better year over year. January and February experienced the usual drop-off due to sales being pulled ahead into the previous year and celebrations for the Chinese New Year. Overseas sales are really starting to add up. Some of this are NEVs made in China and exported. The rest of this is from their growing production capacity outside of China. 21% of their sales were outside of China. I'm gonna make their overseas sales a key metric for BYD. The China market is hyper competitive and crowded. They need to start conquesting sales elsewhere. Sales in Europe are modest, just being established. They know how much the tariff is on their battery EVs and plug-in hybrids that are imported. And later this year, they'll start producing vehicles in Hungary with Turkey production to follow. BYD is said to be considering a third plant in Europe, but don't expect them to be reckless. Their growth has been sustainable, and they plan to bring that same discipline to its global production operations. Nothing's going to happen in Mexico given the current tariff roulette. They are now selling in Kazakhstan, proving that BYD is looking to sell BEVs and PHEVs elsewhere and everywhere. A Pakistan plant is still just talk right now. I teased in the intro that BYD has partnered with DJI on an integrated drone system for their larger premium brand vehicles. The system is called Ling Wan, consists of a drone hanger mounted on top of the vehicle. From here, passengers can launch the drone to check out scenery or to follow the vehicle. This is not the first company to consider something like this. There have been concepts made and a patent filed by Jeep, but credit BYD for just doing it. Put a price tag on it and see if it will sell. In more shocking news, reports are that BYD will soon reveal details of its 1,000-volt platform. ePlatform 3.0 Evo is currently their most advanced, so this platform could be called ePlatform 4.0. BYD's current vehicles are not the fastest charging compared to other Chinese brands. A higher voltage system offers more potential to charge faster, 1,000 volts is a category of EV architecture. The actual nominal voltage it runs at will be somewhere close to it. I've seen reports saying that it's actually 945 volts. Another limiting factor is the battery. BYD's Blade battery is due for a next generation with lower cost, higher energy density, and faster charging. The new rumor for this BYD is 5C charging, so the battery can be completely recharged five times in one hour or once in 12 minutes. Unlike some of its competitors, BYD 
has not built out its own extensive network of high-powered charging. DC fast charging in China is widely available, but not always at the highest power. 120 kilowatts is fairly typical power output, and it gets the job done. The Denza D9 MPV has DC charging connectors on both sides of the vehicle. This can be convenient as it provides more options when you're parking at a charger, or apparently you can dual charge the battery using two different DC chargers. As seen in this image, Freightliner electric tractors do this too. It maximizes the charging speed when dealing with moderately powered hardware. So it sounds like we can soon get details about a thousand volt architecture, faster charging, blade batteries, and a build out of BYD's charging network. I'll put a video out dedicated once we get more details announced, which will probably be like an hour after I finish this video. Most of the reports tie the high voltage architecture to the refreshed Han L and the SUV version Tang L. I talked about the specs for those in an earlier video, over 1000 horsepower stole the headlines, but it speeds up charging with dual DC connectors and a 16 to 80% charging time of just 10 minutes. They've even tested it at minus 30 degrees Celsius. For sure, there was some battery preconditioning to get that done, but still extremely impressive. LFP batteries like BYD uses generally perform a little better than NMC chemistry in very cold conditions. A launch event is coming soon for the Han L and Tang L. A launch event is coming in days for the Denza N9. Here are the details I previously reported. BYD marketing kind of does a slow drip of information leading up to an official launch. The Denza brand is going to debut for the Europe market in April. The Denza design language I think would work really well in Europe a little more classic and less in your face. They would be subject to a tariff into the EU. I assume the same rate as BYD, 10% on plug-in hybrids and 27% on full battery electrics. One more launch is coming up, the BYD Quinn LEV, the all electric version of that that is already available as a plug-in hybrid or DMI. This car is just a tad bit smaller than the BYD SEAL. The SEAL is part of their Ocean series, while the Quinn L is part of their Dynasty series, like the Han L I mentioned earlier, but it's smaller than that vehicle. It will not be on the new 1000 volt architecture. Affordability is the key for this smart sedan to appeal to younger buyers, Power will be modest. I see no signs of a LiDAR sensor, so it will offer the God's Eye C system, also called D-Pilot 100 Intelligent Driving. As you can see, there is a flood of information about to break loose on the cars that we know of, and likely some information about cars that we didn't see coming. I'll do a separate video on the new high voltage architecture and then a regular update once Q1 sales are known in early April. Sales for BYD are looking very good despite a tough market. Now sales for that other EV maker, I don't know. We'll have to see what the numbers look like in a couple of weeks.